Hi there, my name is Rose of Dawn and today I'm going to be talking about context and why it's important. Give it up, gonna be all right. In February 2018, gender-critical feminist Posey Parker was questioned by police after she made several tweets which upset trans activists. The tweets, which referred to trans women with male pronouns and also criticised Mermaid's president Susie Green for allowing her daughter to have gender reassignment surgery at the age of 16, did not result in a prosecution. But the idea of someone potentially getting in trouble with the law for expressing an opinion, whether it's one where you agree with or not, is certainly worrying. Parker isn't the only person to fall foul of speech censorship in 2018, whether it's rap lyrics in memory of a friend or making a pug do a Nazi salute as a prank. And unsurprisingly, she's now not the only gender critical feminist to get in trouble either. Linda Bellows, a veteran feminist campaigner, attended a meeting in York for the We Need to Talk movement in November of last year. Appearing alongside lesbian activists, the purpose of the meeting was to discuss the proposals set forward to change the Gender Recognition Act. It's important to note that Maria McLaughlin, who was assaulted by Tara Wolfe at Speaker's Corner in September 2017, was also in the room. During the meeting, Bellos made some comments that she says were in reference to Wolf's attack. I'm going to play the clip in full so you can see the full context of what was said. I think I'm physiologically and in any other senses a female and actually a woman. But I play football and I box. And if any one of those bastards comes anywhere near me, <laughs> I will take my glasses off and drop them. Anyway, um, <coughs> Yeah, I take my glasses off. Take my glasses off, and I leave. I can't see anything. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> not the point. It's not the point. But I do. Um, I'm, I'm quite prepared to be uh, to um, to threaten violence because um, because it seems to me that politically, what they're seeking to do is piss on all women. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Trans activists weren't happy with what Bello said, and as a result, she was reported to the police, where she was interviewed under caution. And now, a private prosecution has been brought forward against her, which has accused her of breaking Section 5 of the Public Order Act, claiming that she used threatening or abusive words. The prosecution isn't just being brought forward against Bellows, who said the words, but also Venice Allen, who was in the audience at the time, who recorded them and put them online. The trans activist bringing the case forward has been hailed a hero with prominent trans supporters saying they have solidarity with her. And on the other side, gender critical activists are claiming this is a misogynistic attack on women by denying Bellows the right to speak without consequence. A silent protest was held on the 26th of September to highlight this during the hearing, which has now been adjourned to the 30th of November. I feel this is an important issue to comment on, as this goes beyond the simple fight between gender radicals and gender criticals. Instead, this has a wider impact on something more important, which is the right to free speech. I should clarify that I have many ideological differences with Linda Bellows, and this goes further than trans rights. She is a self-defined Marxist, whereas I'm a firm believer in the free market. So we're going to disagree on much more than we're probably going to see eye to eye. But not agreeing with someone doesn't mean they should be denied a platform. As I discussed in my previous video on Posey Parker, the right to disagree comes before ideology. If one side is denied a platform, however much I might oppose it, we all lose out. But let's look at exactly what Bella has said. She's explained as purely in relation to trans activists threatening and pursuing violent means against people they disagree with. And I can agree that the rhetoric and actions of the modern trans movement have a lot in common with the violence we've come to associate with the far left. Footage of trans activists covering themselves at a gender critical event back in May this year, for example, certainly draw parallels with Antifa. I'm not going to say there's no room for debate in what Bellows meant, but I do think it is most likely she was referring to activists like Wolf. And this is when she says, if any of those bastards come near me, this would indicate there's an act of aggression on the part of the trans person and her thumping them in return is therefore an act of defence. I do disagree with Linda on being prepared to threaten violence. I understand the context of what she's saying, don't get me wrong. 
but neither side in this debate should lower themselves to the level of the radical left. Whilst I certainly have issues with the rhetoric used on both sides, the trans activists are the ones who are demonstratively using more violent language and actually carrying out assaults. And if gender critical activists were to act in kind, they would lose any perceived high ground. Violence is not acceptable and you can't condemn one side whilst condoning the other. If all Bello said was that she was happy to show violence to trans people, I would agree she stepped over the line and would condemn her in the same way I've condemned violent trans activists in the past. But in the context of the whole speech, it is clear that that's not what she's saying. She's clarified as such and the context is key. I've touched upon Count Dankula's case many times in my videos, but it's important to do so. We're facing a world where more and more people are facing legal action just because others don't like what they have to say. And we're being constantly told context is not important. And this has now moved beyond Dankula, and it's certainly the case for the likes of Chelsea Russell, who was found guilty of sending an offensive message after posting Snapdog lyrics in memory of a boy who died in a road accident. Liberalist UK will be holding a protest against this ruling in November and I'd like to invite you all to join. I've mentioned why the context of what Bella said is important, but I also want to talk about the context of bringing a legal case like this forward. I've seen gender critical feminists claim this is a misogynistic attack on their rights, but I do disagree. This is an attack on all people who speak out against the gender radical agenda. We're seeing people be shut down for speaking out against this new hardline movement in all walks of life, and this censorship does go way beyond sex. The activist bringing the case forward, Juliana Kendall, has been labelled brave for standing up to what trans activists consider violent speech, and these activists have been very quick to condemn Bellows. But what about the violent rhetoric that comes from their own camp? Did they distance themselves from Tara Wolf when she assaulted a woman that she disagrees with? Or did they protest in solidarity with her? Or did they write lengthy pieces justifying physical attacks on the NUS website? And what about the websites that sell merchandise with phrases like punch a turf? or the numerous Twitter users who parrot this phrase. Will they support legal action against these people as well for consistency? But we all know the answer to this, and violent rhetoric from the trans camp has barely been acknowledged by their own side. Bringing legal cases against people being taken out of context only highlights their hypocrisy. The far left is happy to support violence when it backs up their own morals. And when they take action to shut down others for upsetting them, we all need to stand together, put aside our political differences, however different they may be, and fight for freedom of speech. So what are your thoughts on what Bello said? Do you agree with the context that she gave out? Or do you think that there's a hidden agenda there? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and also follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you all next time.